Hey fellow Google admins, welcome back to Google Cloud Identity Codes. In the last video, we discussed why Google Cloud Identity in the first place. I hope you got a chance to watch that video. If not yet, I would recommend you to watch it first. And in this video, let's talk about what is Google Cloud Identity. Let me share a few slides which will help you get that understanding. So what is Google Cloud Identity? It is essentially identity as a service offering from Google which helps customers manage their identities centrally. These identities may include users and groups and members, etc. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. Along with providing secure authentication and authorization to applications and devices so that the right people would have access to right resources in the right context. I understand this is just a summarized version of my understanding of Google Cloud Identity. Let me take you to another slide where we will talk about that in much more detail so you understand what Google Cloud Identity can do for you as your centralized identity providers. Number one, it is a cloud-based directory, which means you can do things like you can manage your organizational units, your users, your groups, members, everything in this cloud-based directory, just like you have been doing in traditional Microsoft on-prem active directory or uh, open LDAP, etc. It also offers directory sync, which means in case if you already have direct somewhere like Microsoft AD or LDAP, you can install this directory sync behind your firewall so that you can take all those identities locally and put them in Google Cloud directory with that sync. And then you can have the sync run on a, on a schedule by itself. You can also apply settings and policies right there in the admin console, which you get once you sign up for Google Cloud identity. Now, along with directory, it also helps you with your authentication system. For example, you can have password policies to define how complex the password should be when users are trying to log in to Google Cloud Identity. You can also enforce MFA or two-step verification as Google calls it, where once you put your credentials, users will be required to put the second factor of authentication and it supports almost all of the factors of second factor authentication, including the TOTP based ones like Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator, Security Key, SMS, Mobile Push, etc. Also, you can have SAML authentication so that once you log into Google, you should be able to connect to other third party applications which provide SAML access. So, there is a catalog which Google provides in which there are applications which are available for you to just plug and play and in case if you do not see any application in that catalog you have choice to create a custom SAML application in that case. LDAP applications now in case if you have been you know using LDAP based applications those applications might be hooked up with your LDAP or Active Directory for authentication or authorization you can now call Google cloud directory as your directory in LDAP as a service fashion. So instead of using or hooking your, your LDAP based applications with other active directory or open LDAP, now you can hook it up with your Google based cloud directory via a utility that's called secure LDAP. Now there are some applications which do not support modern authentication protocols like SAML or OpenID and for those applications, Google has also launched something called password vaulted apps which is available in google cloud identity i'm sure you might be using some sort of password manager in your personal life like LastPass or dashlane or one password or maybe google chrome password manager it is essentially the same thing but you as a google cloud identity admin can control who will have access to which application so once you create an application, you can either enter the credentials on your user's behalf, and then you can assign this application to a group of users. When these users log into their Google Cloud Identity Dashboard, they will see the application there. When they click on that application, the Google Cloud Identity Chrome extension 
will detect the URL and will inject the credentials on users behalf so they don't need to. So it's like a fake single sign on uh, as, as it is called in, in identity industry, but essentially your users will not need to remember the credentials anymore. Okay, so after authentication, it also provides you authorization to decide who and when can have access to which resources. For example, you can define which applications will be available to which users. Google Cloud Identity comes with a few applications and one of them is, for example, Google Drive. Now you can, in your admin console, define who will have access to Google Drive. Is it all of your users or maybe a subset of your users? You can also define context of your access, which means in which context user will be able to access application X, Y, or Z. Let me give you an example. Let's say if you want to create a policy which says, in case if Goldie is trying to log in from office IP range, and if Goldie is on company owned device, then he should be able to access Gmail and Google Drive. But if Goldie is coming from his home IP address and uh, is coming from a personal device, then he should be able to access Google Meet, but not Gmail and Google Drive. So you should be able to create those kind of policies with context of your access. Another one is programmatic access. Google Cloud Identity has some applications. And in case if you're using Google Workspace, it has even more set of applications. But sometimes you might need to enhance your Google Workspace or Cloud Identity experience by installing third-party applications. Now, which means one side you need to enhance that experience, but other side you shouldn't be making any compromise on the security side. So with programmatic access or uh, a feature that's called API controls in Google Cloud Identity, you can define which third-party applications are allowed to access your users' data programmatically. You can put those applications in allowed list, and then only those apps will be able to programmatically interact with your user's data. After authorization, you can also have user lifecycle management. In the last video, we discussed each user today is consuming multiple applications. And unless you have a centralized identity provider, it is very painful for users as well as for admins to do the administration and to consume those applications on a day-to-day basis. Fortunately, with Google Cloud Identity, you have a large catalog of applications where you can, after initial configuration, you would be able to create a user identity in multiple applications. So for example, I can do things like, if my user job title is equal to sales, then put that user into my Salesforce group. And this happens with the dynamic group functionality that Google Cloud Identity offers. And then you can have a SAML application called Salesforce and you can assign that to this Salesforce group so that as soon as user becomes part of this group, that user will have access to Salesforce application and his account will also be automatically provisioned in Salesforce based on automated user lifecycle management. And in case if that user leaves and you suspend that user in Google Cloud Identity, that deprovisioning will take place in all the applications that you have configured. You can also have multi-factor authentication. Now, Google calls it two-step verification. There is a little difference. MFA means more than one factor. It can be two, it can be three. Google's two-step verification mean you will have two-step of verification. One is your credential set, user email address and password and then the second factor which can be sms or voice or push notification or authenticator or maybe the security key okay so you can have mfa and the best part is you do not need to invest anything additional it's a part of cloud identity subscription itself in case if you have google workspace it's all inbuilt too and it supports multiple factors as we discussed you will have flexibility to implement it. You can either say enforce MFA from XYZ date so that your users will start getting notification when they try to log in that your admin has enforced MFA and you have this time left. So please enroll for MFA. 
And you can also control it. So for example, you can say, you can define the scope, whether MFA is enforced for your whole organization or maybe just a subset of users. And within that subset, you can also say that for my CX organization, only security key is accepted as a second factor of authentication. However, for rest of my users, Google Authenticator or push notification is fine too. You can also have endpoint management. So for example, you can manage your Android and iOS devices. You can control who can access data from these operating systems. You can also have your own allowed list where you say, these are my 10 corporate applications which can interact with my Google Cloud identity data. So you can have those in a list of corporate applications for your Android and uh, iOS too. On Android, you can also have a work profile. So in case of BYOD or bring your own device, your users can come up with their personal device and they will have a virtual isolation between their work and their personal life where you can control what happens in their work profile and let them choose what happens in their personal profile. You can also do things like jailbreak detection, disable camera, password enforcement. You can also make policies what should happen when a certain criteria is not met? Should you wipe the device? Maybe if the device is lost or stolen or something happened to the device. You can either account wipe, which means only the account, Google Cloud Identity or Workspace account will be wiped. Or you can also do the factory reset or the device wipe, which means everything on that device will be wiped. You can also manage Windows 10 devices with Google Cloud Identity, which means two things. Number one, you can have your Windows 10 users log into their devices via Google authentication. Okay, that means in case if you MFA enforced, when users try to log into their Windows 10 devices, they will be required to enter their user ID, their password, and then MFA too. It, it works directly with Google, so you do not need Active Directory or LDAP in place for that. But in case if you already have Active Directory, this functionality can also work in conjunction or in complement to the Active Directory. Now, you can also push policies. That's number two. You can also push policies on Windows 10 devices, which means just like you might be running GPOs, you can now push your policies right from Google Cloud Identity Admin Console. So things like uh, users should not be able to turn on camera or off camera, etc. Uh, you can also manage applications. You can also manage users with privileged access on those Windows machines, whether you're going to give a user local admin access or just a regular user access, etc. You can also manage your Mac devices, which means your users can log into their Mac devices via Google authentication or Google acting as the identity provider for your Mac devices. And just in case if you're using Chromebooks, then you're all set because it's coming from Google itself and it provides even more functionalities. Now with Google Cloud Identity, you would also have security controls. There are a bunch of them, but just to name a few of the important ones, the first one is DLP or data loss prevention, where in case if you're using Google Workspace, you would have DLP for Gmail and Google Drive. Now, in case you want to apply the policy, you can do that in three steps. Step number one is you will define the scope to which audience this policy be applied. So one can be all the users in your, in your domain. Second can be a subset of users maybe users who belong to a, an individual group or organizational unit. Second is your trigger. What should trigger this policy? So where you can leverage Google's AT plus content detectors to detect things like a social security number, PHI, et cetera. And then finally, you can have your action. And this action can be, for example, if it's Google Drive, that action can be, do not allow users to share this document outside my domain or maybe let users share this uh, document outside their domain, but the recipients should not be able to make a copy or print or download that specific document. If you wanna learn more, I will have a different course in DLP. Now, second one is data regions, where you can decide where your data be hosted when you are putting data in Google Cloud Identity. Then the recent announcement which Google made 
It is about client-side encryption where you can retain the decryption key. So Google will even not have access to your Google Drive files. And finally, the compliances. So Google Cloud Identity does support or have compliances. So for example, in case if you are a healthcare organization, Google can sign business associate agreement with you. At the end of the day, it's a shared responsibility, but till the time you are applying all the required controls as per Google's recommendation and, and your needs, you can help yourself uh, be compliant. Another one is a FedRAMP, so Google Workspace or Cloud Identities is a FedRAMP moderate, I think, till today, which is August 2021 and in progress for uh, FedRAMP Pi. So a lot of uh, compliances are, are available uh, in case if you are part of a regulated industry. Okay, and finally, whatever is happening so far in our journey to Google Cloud Identity will be logged so you can get insights from it. By default, most of the logging is retained for six months in Google Cloud Identity Admin Console just in case if you have a need to retain these logs for longer duration, maybe for compliance or any other purpose, then there are a few options available to you. You can have a BigQuery integration. BigQuery is Google's data warehouse where you can store and analyze large amounts of data. Once you have this native integration in place, Google will automatically send the logging table every single day to your BigQuery project. And then in BigQuery, you can have, you know, your SQL queries and you can have your visualization layer, whether Tableau or Looker or Data Studio. And then in case if you have already invested in a Siam system, such as Splunk, you can leverage Google's integration with those prominent Siam systems. And finally, in case if you have some sort of custom need for these logs to be made available to work with some of your homegrown systems, then you can also leverage Google's reporting API to parse those logs from Google system and take them to wherever you need to. So in a nutshell, this is something Google Cloud Identity can help you with. There are a few things that I haven't included or I might be missing here. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put the comment under this video and I'll be happy to collaborate on that. But this is essentially like the summarized version of what Google Cloud Identity can do for you. I will make one more video to show you which applications from the end user side are included in Google Cloud Identity. So just to wrap it up, it's an identity as a service offering from Google. It can help you manage your identities centrally in a cloud-based directory. It can help you with secure authentication and authorization to your applications and devices. So with that, thank you so much. In the next video, we'll talk about the differences between Google Cloud Identity, Google Workspace, and Google Cloud Platform. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much.